This week on Christian World News, the meeting that made history. President Donald Trump comes face to face with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. See why it never would have happened without the prayers of North Korea's Christians. And hear Franklin Graham's special message for Kim Jong-un. Plus, in a city where Protestants and Catholics still hate each other, the cross stands as the only hope for this broken community. And Harris Faulkner, she's the wildly popular host of Outnumbered Overtime. And yet she says God has given her an even higher calling. And welcome to Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. George Thomas is on assignment. President Trump and Kim Jong-un met in a historical summit to end North Korea's nuclear threat. While some say the agreement is short on specifics, most experts agree it's a good first step, not only towards ridding North Korea of nuclear weapons, but also easing Christian persecution. Heather Sells has our reports. The president is touting North Korea's commitment to rid the Korean peninsula of nuclear weapons. But the two leaders also said they need more negotiations to make it happen. The president's critics are expressing concern. What we have is a very vague, unspecific framework that maybe is a cause for hope, but hardly confidence. I read the statement and it's difficult for me to see if something was actually agreed to or not. The president's commitment to call off military drills on the Korean peninsula caught many at home and abroad by surprise. Under the circumstances that we're negotiating a very comprehensive, complete deal, I think it's inappropriate to be having war games. The message now is let's try to find a peaceful solution. Uh, the military exercises being put on hold is fine with me. It gives us space. Religious freedom advocates see the summit as a step in the right direction. The president said he talked about Christians in North Korea, quote, very strongly with Kim Jong-un. I'm encouraged that they did bring it up. They discussed it. Franklin Graham has delivered humanitarian aid to North Korea for decades. He said he expects persecution will to some degree ease. No question. Uh, no question. Uh, I think this, this meeting with uh, uh, Kim Jong-un and President Trump uh, is huge. And yes, the Christians are going to benefit in North Korea. The optics of the summit still have much of the world in awe. The two leaders side by side after decades of hostilities between the two nations. Some Democrats say it was a mistake. This was a big win uh, for Kim Jong-un of North Korea. He got what his father and grandfather never got, uh, a meeting as equals on the world stage. But Democratic pollster Pat Cadell says the pictures are fantastic and will bump up the president's ratings, which are key to the midterm elections. This cannot hurt him. I think the American people would like to see this resolved. It would be in the interest of peace and it would be to everyone's benefit. The president clearly intends to ride the momentum, tweeting on his arrival back home this morning, everybody can now feel much safer than the day I took office. Heather Sell, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. Evangelist Franklin Graham has a long history with North Korea. In the 1930s, his mother Ruth attended a boarding school in Pyongyang. In 1992, his father Billy met with Kim Jong-un's grandfather. Franklin himself made four trips, bringing humanitarian aid to the country. Earlier, he spoke with Heather Sells about North Korea and why it gives him hope. President Trump is the first president that has actually uh, tried and is trying uh, to resolve this issue. So I commend him and just thank God that he is uh, that he's taken this uh, direction and he's focusing on this. I, I know there's a lot of hope around the world in regards to this. And the president has said that he has secured a commitment for complete denuclearization of the Korean pen Peninsula. How optimistic or not optimistic are you about this? Oh, I'm very optimistic. Uh, I think the North Koreans have been wanting to talk to the Americans for a long time. And uh, the, 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 this is the first administration that uh, they've been able to talk to directly like this. Uh, the, the North Koreans just want to be shown respect. And uh, other administrations just uh, would just kind of brush them off like they they're, they're, they're were nothing. Uh, these are prideful people. Uh, these are people that uh, back in the 50s and 60s uh, had a pretty strong economy 
And uh, they built themselves a, a, a beautiful city, uh, Penyang, a gorgeous city, wonderful monuments. Uh, it's really something to see. But of course, in the 70s and 80s, uh, they've had uh, famine and uh, tremendous uh, economic decline. And th this is a country that is in trouble. Of course, it's got the sanctions. Uh, they, they need help. And if America and the uh, DPRK, if they could resolve the differences and have some type of peace treaty between the two, uh, I think this would be huge for the DPRK. And it would be huge for us. We could save billions of dollars by not having to send uh, so many troops and weapons to that part of the world. Mm. The president said that he also brought up the subject of Christians in North Korea, quote, very strongly. What is, what is your response to that? There are Christians in the country, and I just felt that by the Samaritan's Purse, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, by maintaining our foot in the door, so to speak, uh, we would be able to help the Christians. Uh, I want the, the, gov the communist government to know that Christians are not their enemies, but they, they, they have the potential of being the very best citizens in the country because God commands uh, us, all of us, uh, to pray for those that are in authority, whether we pray for our own president, but the people in North Korea that are Christians should be praying for their leadership. And so, yes, I think uh, Christians pr uh, play a very important role in society, and the North Korean government, I wanted them to know that, that we were not their enemies, that we were really their friends. Do you think that this summit has the potential to ease some of the persecution on believers in North Korea? Uh, no question. I think this, this meeting with uh, uh, Kim Jong-un and President Trump uh, is huge. And yes, the Christians are going to benefit in North Korea. All right. Well, Reverend Graham, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Words of hope from Franklin Graham. Well, Graham's Samaritan Purse Ministry has shipped millions of tons of food and other aid to North Korea. And you can learn more about that work on our website, cbnnews.com. Well, Christians around the world believe the Singapore summit was only made possible after decades of prayer and sacrifice by North Korea's underground Christians. Our Lucille Toulousen brings us that story from Singapore. At the end of the Singapore summit, President Donald Trump and Chairman Kim Jong-un signed a framework agreement for nuclear disarmament. Both leaders know many months of difficult negotiations and commitments lie ahead before peace and prosperity can be realized on the Korean peninsula. The two men seem to develop a good relationship. And that may be the summit's greatest achievement. The people of Singapore say they're very happy and honored to host such a historical event that promotes peace in the world. A lot of work was done to make this summit successful and intervention of leaders from China, Japan and South Korea. But Christians around the world are attributing the success to the many sacrifices of the persecuted North Korean Christians and to much prayer. Pastor Jerome Ocampo recounts the South Korea Uprising Prayer Conference in 2016, where young leaders of churches from different nations gathered near the border of North Korea. They cried out to God for the reunification of the Korean Peninsula. Although human rights and religious freedom were not the focus of the Singapore summit, Pastor Jerome believes that denuclearization can pave the way to a greater purpose. We should not stop at the nuclearization, we should continue to pray for the liberation of giving freedom to the North Korean believers. Spiritual revival took place in the North Korean capital of Pyongyang in 1907. Ironically today, North Korea is a place where Christians suffer the world's worst persecution. In the book by missionary Kwang Choi, It's Fine Should I Die. North Koreans testify how they were brainwashed from childhood into believing that, quote, Christianity is a tool of invasion of small and weak nations by the imperialist United States of America and its agent South Korea's puppet government. Christians in North Korea were already purged in prison camps even before the Korean War began in 1950. This is why Christians believe that a U.S. president coming face to face with a North Korean leader was unimaginable and nothing short of miraculous. Pastor Jerome had a dream about Kim Jong-un just two weeks before the 2016 uprising conference. Kim Jong-un, he had a dream and he was waking up in the morning 
And in his dream, somebody was speaking to him. Maybe it was God, but the voice was like this. Will you be remembered as the Korean who destroys Korea? Or would you like, would you like to be remembered as the Korean who unites North and South Korea? And in my dream, all of a sudden he just says, he made a choice. I'm going to be the Korean that will unite North and South Korea. And this is why Pastor Jerome is rallying Christians to pray for Kim Jong-un. I think what God has shown today is God has access to his heart. And therefore, God can do more. We cannot erase what he has done in the past. And I think the whole history of the whole regime is, uh, is, is, will always be there. But I believe as a millennial, he is the most flexible of all the regime to actually bring change. And if we're going to pray for change, and we believe that God can bring that change, we will see one day, one Korea. We will see one day, Pyongyang will welcome believers and we will see God manifesting His glory again, probably in a new wave of revival all over Korea. Lucille Talusan, CBN News, Singapore. Thanks, Lucille. Up next, the church that sits on the border of two warring communities and how it's bridging the gap for peace. Angels were created to serve God. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. CBN presents Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. In Pat's latest DVD, you'll get the biblical insight into these mysterious spiritual creatures and discover the important role they play in God's kingdom and in your life. We're also going to meet real people who have come face to face with these divine creatures and have experienced what can only be described as miraculous, life-changing encounters. As he started pulling me through, it was just a burst of white light. My thought is the angels were there to hold me together. I knew that this was something that was happening and it was supernatural. Angels, their power, purpose, and presence. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your copy of Angels. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Welcome back. They were known as the Troubles. For decades, a brutal war raged between Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland. And even though the violence ended about 20 years ago, true peace remains elusive. Dale Heard reports from Belfast. There is peace in Belfast, officially. But this wall still separates Catholics and Protestants, and this gate still closes every night. New Life City Church sits squarely on Belfast's so-called peace barrier. Part of its building in Catholic Belfast, part of it in Protestant Belfast. It welcomes those who were once mortal enemies. Among those that come to our church regularly, uh, Sunday after Sunday, are those who are from terrorist backgrounds who at one time would have wanted to have killed each other. There was a time whenever I would have killed some of them. Jack McKee was a soldier during the war and today pastors New Life City Church along with his son Johnny. And I think that many Americans looking on would believe that, that we reached peace in this country. We never really got there. There is a semblance of peace, but peace does not re really exist. Parts of Belfast today are still racked by violence, drug abuse, and broken families. Members of Protestant and Catholic paramilitary groups have morphed into gangs, running drugs and protection rackets, and killing anyone who gets in their way. 
This church in an old warehouse sits like a fortress in the middle of it all. It's one thing to preach peace and reconciliation. It's another thing to put your church on the borderline between forces that want to kill each other. I don't think there is a building quite like this in the world um, where you have had two opposing communities, two opposing people groups um, that have literally killed each other um, by the thousands. Most joined the fighting as teenagers and spent the prime of their lives in prison. Oso murdered a man before he was 18. I came across a group of men who had two Roman Catholics up against the wall. They asked me had I got a gun, and I says, no, I don't have a gun, but I can get one. As they said that, one of the Catholic guys ran away. So I took the other guy, and I took him away. I set myself up as judge, jury, and executioner, and I took that young man's life. Today, Pastor Jack and former paramilitary members of his church carry the cross down the middle of the Schenkel Road in what was once a war zone in Belfast, lifting the cross as the only hope for this divided community. I carry the cross today because uh, I come from Republic of West Belfast. And today is my personal token of reconciliation to the Union's loyalist community. And to literally raise that cross above that gun. And for to carry the cross down the Shankle Road, where I used to be a paramilitary commander, a UVF commander, now to be a Christian. You've got Republicans who have been born again. You've got Protestants who have been born again. So the significance of the cross is that the cross is for everybody in Ulster or Ireland. That here was a man that died on the cross for the sins of everyone. And that was a great opportunity to walk around through both communities and to lift his name above every other name. As far as I'm concerned, a terrorist is a terrorist. And for the Holy Spirit to break into that is something that is supernatural. And yet we've seen that happen so many times, even here in Belfast. Jack McKee has been threatened with death more than once for taking a leading role in trying to stop the violence in Belfast. I know that I am the most hated pastor in this community, possibly in Northern Ireland. I don't know any other pastor in this country who's been sentenced to death or had more death attempts on them than I have, and I'm not overstating that. He's written a book called, What Does It Take? And it's simply asking the question, what does it take in order to move communities away from division? The church has the answer to that. New Life City Church opens its doors to the community daily with a soccer field, a coffee shop, and programs for those who need help. This community needed another church, but not just another church. It's only through the grace of God uh, and what he is doing. There's very often things that take place within this building that we never orchestrated, um, that we never planned, that we never purposed, um, but it just happens. I stand back sometimes and I say, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And I just get amazed when I see people coming to faith in Jesus at any time but knowing they come from a terrorist background and that they're able to come and sit in the same row from those who were on the opposite side and worship God alongside them, only God could have done that. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Belfast. Thanks, Dale. Great story. More than one million people every day tune in to watch Harris Faulkner. Now the Fox News anchor tells us about her true purpose in life when we return. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day.
At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. that is upside down and on fire. These people are trapped and we need the jaws of life. My feet were on fire. The car was filling up with smoke. There was fire coming in through my left door. The steering wheel was stuck in my chest, I couldn't move. The seat belt, I kept trying to release it, but it wouldn't release. And I just screamed, God, send your angels now. I saw a set of just white hands. It was just a burst of white light. Fox News anchor Harris Faulkner, a familiar face on TV, but what you may not know is that Faulkner is a so-called army brat. She says being raised in a military family not only shaped her values, but gave her tools to succeed. Tools that she says are as important in everyday life as they are on the battlefield. John, thank Harris you Faulkner much. has worked her way up through the ranks at Fox News. And her success as co-host of the popular program, Outnumbered, has led to her own show, Outnumbered Overtime. We'll go Outnumbered Overtime now. I'm Harris Faulkner. Harris credits many of her accomplishments to a military upbringing and writes about it in her new book, Nine Rules of Engagement, A Military Brat's Guide to Life and Success. Most of us need the principles of the military to get through. You need to know how to put a mission together to victory. Harris is the daughter of retired Lieutenant Colonel Bob Harris, an Army officer and pilot who served two tours in Vietnam. She grew up hearing her father's battle stories, where success often meant the difference between life and death. So when I said, Dad, you know, I have these rules in my life that I live by, and I, I know I came by them, you know, from you and Mom, and... Sometimes my friends would make fun of me because I was just so disciplined and so set in my ways. And I'm like, well, that's part of how I grew up. So I really want to share that with a wider audience. Her book's nine rules of engagement start with recruit your special forces. The Navy SEALs don't travel with 200 people. Right. They, they can't execute the type of tip of the spear missions that they do. The Green Berets don't travel like that. They choose certain people for certain missions. And I think in life, that's how we have to be. We become like the five people we spend most of our time with. Oh, Wendy, we gotta be picky. Wow. And, and you might have to fire a few people who yeah. don't belong in that inner circle because they can't help you be your best yeah. and help you further your purpose. Faulkner believes her deep faith in God has also given her life purpose. My mission in life is to get to heaven. So the people I have in my inner circle, I don't allow to do the rule breaking mm. that we know as Christians we can't. When did you realize, you know, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, I believe in God? Oh, from birth. I mean, it wasn't, it, it was a deal breaker in my household because dad was at war. Faulkner's Christian faith made a recent assignment to the Holy Land even more meaningful. Let's bring in a very special guest now, Dory Gold, former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. You were telling me in the commercial break. What was it like to be there in Israel covering the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem? This is my favorite question ever. The Bible is in color, and it's in 3D, and you can touch it. You can go to the place where they brought Jesus body after he was crucified and laid him down and cleaned him and prepared him mm -hmm. for what was next. I love this part of your book. You talked about um, the plaque that you have in your office. Mm -hmm. Just a girl who decided to go for it. Oh, yeah. Everybody told me that it wasn't going to happen. I mean, not just a few people. Like, like oh, are you good at anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Fear my heart. And after going for it and achieving, she's now in a position to help others do the same. My purpose has broadened. My purpose now is to help as many people rise as possible. And it doesn't matter if they're women or men, but that sense of value that we have as individuals, I think, informs us and helps us to treat each other better. You have had a tremendous career, so much success here at Fox, and now with your own show. 
Are you living your TV dreams? I'm living my dream totally. I mean, my career dream, my home life dream with the two kids and the hubby, my familial dream outside of that was for my mom to see me host my own weekday show. And she didn't live to see that, but her partner did of 57 years. Yeah. And because he prays to heaven every night, I know she knows, she knows, she knows. She knows. So it's a total dream. And yet there's more. She says the fact that she sits where she does now is not a coincidence. This is the culmination of all of the prayers that my dad said in that cockpit for me, hoping that he would make it back home. Loved my time with Harris. Well, for more stories just like these, go to our website. You'll find it at CBNNews.com. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids. Do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah! Well, do you? Yeah! Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. CBN Superbook made an appearance at Russia's Children Media Conference. The five-day conference in Moscow allows children's media from all over the world to be on display. CBN presented Superbook to more than 150,000 visitor, visitors. Children and their parents heard the gospel through the screenings and meeting the Superbook character Gizmo, of course. Well, thanks so much for joining us this week. Until next week, from all of us here at Christian World News, goodbye, and as always, God bless you.